Hello and welcome to our walkthrough video for the FYP Surround Sound project entitled The Descent. Um, group members are myself, David Williams, and uh, Gordon McCauley. Hello. Uh, this is video is just a quick walkthrough on how we went about the process, uh, more from a technical point of view than anything else, because we can't really display the audio through, through this video because it's not in surround and it won't work. So basically, FYP Surround is the folder that we set up on the student data disk of the studio Mac size of 45 and a half gigs at the end of this uh, project which is massive and considering it's just audio all these files from here on down are different ran just different miscellaneous sessions that everything was recorded and we brought everything into this it's been backed up several times all the audios within these and then we these are all mono um, sessions and you can't just open those as a surround session you have to create a new surround session and import all the session data from these so that's what we did for these four here one, two, three, four, and these are the different sections. So I'm just going to sh open the first one there for you and um, take you through that. Okay, so this is the first session, and this is the opening scene which takes place inside a car with two characters, a female and a male. Um, so it's made up of the two voices, the male and the female, the four tracks of car ambience. It's got a car crash sound effects, it's got the music that's being played within the car. It's got um, hospital noises after the car crash and a hospital ambience. And then we've got dialogue that takes place in the hospital, just six channels around dialogue that was used between an interaction between the main character and his doctor. Um, then after that, the piano composition takes place. The piano was recorded with a polyhymna pentagon arrays, you can kind of see it here, it was, but we used a mono overhead as opposed to a center mic, and we also mic'd up the left and right hammers. Um, Going back through, as you see here, different things are being used as compressors and EQs being used. I'm not going to take you through every one of these because it's going to take too much time. But there's been a bit of sidechain compression being used on the voices here going into the ambience to ensure that the ambience doesn't overtake the voices. So that's being bussed into these compressors here via sidechain and bus 64. Bus 64 there, the level is adjusted here. That's actually automated to drop out at certain points when it's not needed as well. So a lot of work has gone into all, every element of these sessions. And these are the two um, tracks for the song that's playing on the radio in the car, and they're automated positional-wise. Some song, other songs are automated positional-wise as well, which you'll be able to see if you are here, if you listen to the proper uh, surround mix of this. Um, I think that's most of that for that session there. I'm going to hand you over to Gordon now for the next session, which is the heavy metal track session, the first one. Hello. Okay, so this session has the end of the piano here and um, that's just basically to edit the, the voiceover that was recorded in the studio on top of because uh, it overlaps it at the end of the piano section and um, as you can see there's left side of the array the center at the left and the left surround have been used to uh, record one character and the opposite side has been used to uh, record the other character, the opposite character, and they kind of talk over and back, and these have been lightly compressed. Uh, next, we move on to the acoustic guitar recording, which is basically the start of the first heavy metal song, and we have the original six track, uh, six microphones used to record the acoustic guitar, which was recorded in the HCT building, and for production effect, we reversed this guitar, so as you can see, there's another six tracks here. The acoustic guitar was recorded as a polyhymna pentagon pattern with an additional 12 fret uh, high frequency microphone. Um, the, as you can see here, there are, there are three electric guitar tracks used in the song. So we have guitar lead, guitar left and guitar right. And these are all recorded using a Fukada tree surround microphone array. Some of the signals used in the microphone array were uh, subject to uh, phasing issues because of so many signals been outputted through the surround system so the, the suitable tracks have been muted for uh, phase issues and frequency masking. Uh, we also used a small bit of uh, compression here, a 4 to 1 ratio, 2 dB gain and a minus 20 dB threshold to just contain the guitars a bit more. You can see that there's 24 tracks of guitars alone. 
the bass guitar was recorded in the studio with a, a DI, an SM57, an Audix D3 and a AKG C1000. We only used two signals from the recording. The bass amp was recorded with a, an SM57 and a C1000 at the rear of the bass amp and as you can see a small bit of uh, compression compression was used here uh, along with a bit of EQ to cut out the low rumble from the C1000. The drum tracks are here now and we have used a small bit of compression for the surround microphone array mics that were the uh, Polyham the Pentagon. We had five AKG 414s. Um, we have drum overhead track which was a mono uh, U87 used to record the overheads. That was duplicated to uh, parallel compress the over the toms and the same signal was also used to bring out the cymbals in the mix. So the kick drum and the snare drum uh, signals have been uh, compressed for a parallel compression to help them uh, jump out of the mix more and uh, with a small bit of EQ to uh, bring out the point in the kick drum. So the next 12 tracks you see are dialogue happening between the main character and his madness, so basically his schizophrenic side. As you can see there's uh, two uh, surround microphone arrays here, there's six mic arrays and uh, they were parallel compressed from the drums here as you can see and the bass guitar as um, to try and duck the signal <coughs> to improve clarity uh, of the voiceover with the, the drums and bass in the background. So I'm going to move on to the next track now which is the fast metal track or the second uh, music piece. So as you can see, this is our second metal piece. Okay, so we have the left guitar recording here, the right guitar recording, and the lead guitar. As you can see, the left and right have been lightly compressed uh, with a three to one ratio to uh, just contain them in the mix and help uh, clarity between the instruments. Um, the lead guitar hasn't, was just used. The lead guitar used a 100 uh, hertz cut just to add more clarity and just clean up the mix a bit. The bass guitar again was recorded in, in mono in the recording studio using the C1000 and a DI from the Ampeg bass amp. The DI signal has been parallel compressed and uh, EQ'd to bring out more of the, the punchy mid-range frequencies, drop the, the low frequencies and highs of course. And a 60Hz cut has been made to the C1000 mic. The drum tracks as you can see here have all been compressed with a 4 to 1 ratio at minus 24 dB threshold and that's just to clean up the low end of the mix, uh, add more gain and uh, just help with the signal. Um, as you can see the same processing has occurred on this session with the drums. We've had a mono overhead to record the drums along with the surround mics. Uh, the mono overhead has been EQ'd to pull out the the floor tom, the rack tom and the kind of the points or the attack points of these toms and they've been parallel compressed along with the kick drum signals and the snare drum signals to help with the, the punchiness of those signals through the, in the mix of the drums. Uh, I'm going to hand you on to David now. I just uh, go through the final scenes in the uh, piece. Um, they're made up of different ambiences. One takes place at the beach uh, his workplace, which is a kind of a general store, which was called the Dunn Stores, a uh, hospital where he kills the doctor. He kills his boss inside the workplace ambience. And at the beach, he's kind of where he's contemplating doing it, and at the end, he kills himself as well. Uh, a couple of inside in the hospital, a couple of effects were used to make it more obvious that the listener is in the hospital. Um, sound of a trolley moving past on the right hand side, and the sound of a heart monitor moving past on the left hand side as the listener is taken through the hospital corridors because it is a moving ambience. Um, then the dialogue tracks, th these are uh, the subjects dialogue tracks taking place at the beach, they have to be separated from the ones that take place at the workplace and at the hospital just because it needed to be, to be treated a little bit differently. Um, we have here then is footsteps, uh, samples, shotgun and shotgun loading uh, sounds, as you a bit there, you'll be able to see them a bit better. Then some screams from the bystanders at, uh, at his workplace. That there's some piano used at the very end where he kills himself as well. And the main section of this is probably the electric acoustic composition, which uh, is made up of a range of different sounds taken from the piece that have been stretched 
distorted, reversed, treated in certain ways to make them sound as disturbing as possible and it kind of moves along through all these sounds and all along there. And a lot of these sounds have a lot of movement through them. You should see all these, if you play at these sound panners and move it very quickly, play one there that moves quite a, quite a bit. This one here, as you can see it spins around the listener to the, over to the left and up to the top the front left, that's kind of movement. Others are more frantic movements, that's quite a slow movement, but others are moving different ways. And that's the four sessions that make up the entire piece, and I'm going to take you through the mastering session. So this is the mastering session. Um, all the four sessions have been brought into this, the first one in blue, second one in green, third one in purple, and fourth one in red there, as you can see. Uh, there are four surround sound tracks into surround sound master. This is just to get them balanced properly. This is the, we call it mastering session, but most of the mastering is actually already done. It's just a quick kind of balance needs to be done on all these faders here. A small bit of compression needs to be applied to these trees as well because we weren't able to actually mix at zero dB in the other sessions due to the location of the surround sound studio being next to offices and that. So that kind of concluded all the mixing and mastering process and that was then bounced out. We've had one bounce so far, it's probably going to be changed again before the final bounce is submitted. But the final thing you can see here is 1.4 gigs, 6 tracks of audio duration, nearly 28 minutes, and it's massive file size again. Like So that's one thing to bear in mind if you're doing some some projects, is you need lots of space for all of these um, all of these sessions and files. So um, we're not going to be able to hear the sound audio through this video. Um, it's probably available through the college somewhere if you want to hear it. But for the purposes of this video, you won't be able to hear it in the sound. Okay, thank you. Thanks very much. Cheers. Thank you.